Well, our Kiwanian of the day should have been Tim Meharry, but he is um, going to the city. And so then Steve Meyer would have been the next obvious choice since it's his wife that's speaking, but he is going to the city also. <laughs> I guess I will. Um, <laughs> we have with us today Amber Meyer, who works at Northwest Family Services, and she's going to tell us what's going on there, and I believe a few other things that she is involved in as well. So, Amber, if you would help. The main reason I'm here is Northwest Family Services, um, and I just wanted to give everybody an update on what we're doing and then ask for a little bit of help. Um, Northwest Family Services has been in the community for 37 years now, providing um, counseling services primarily and parenting services to um, family and children in the area. Um, we just last Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday had our um, national accreditation survey through CARF and that went extremely well. Um, we had a surveyor, surveyor that um, has been doing this for 16 years um, and he said we were the second agency ever that he's done um, that had no um, recommendations for corrections. So that is awesome. We did great. Um, and it was really just really nice to hear um, somebody from outside that has gone not only throughout the United States doing um, accreditations, but internationally doing accreditations to, to think so highly of what we do. So we're really excited about that and wanted to brag about that. Um, so services that we provide, this is more just a, a review for most of you. It's in the glossy white brochure. Um, we have our emergency youth shelter for kids um, from birth to age 18. Um, that we uh, can take in a child that can be either somebody that's in state custody or if it, there's just a family emergency. We've had several situations where um, I know a while back we had a single mom that had to have an emergency <coughs> surgery. Um, we took in her two little ones um, until family could get here. Um, so it's not just custody kids that we're dealing with. Um, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Um, I think Yolanda has come and presented on the tobacco settlement. Um, she's doing amazing things in northwest Oklahoma, um, getting um, areas, especially where kids are involved, um, to become smoke-free so that they don't have that secondhand smoke and that exposure. Um, the Positive Turning Points program, this is a program we do in conjunction with um, the juvenile justice system. Um, so any of our um, teenagers who get in trouble with the law for the first time get referred to this program and it just it's a program for the youth and the parent to come. Um, it's a 12 hour class and they come and learn about communication, anger management, better decision making um, to try to correct whatever pattern is leading them into getting involved with the legal system. So you do that. Um, the Parenting Through Separation and Divorce class, that is a court-mandated class for anybody who's going through a divorce that has children under the age of 18. Um, and it's just basically teaching the parents how to co-parent as they are going through their separation and how to um, work together for the benefit of the child and kind of educate them a little bit about what their children are going to be going through and experiencing during that transition. Um, the Start Right program is a home-based parenting program. It's for um, pregnant women, pregnant families, um, at, through the age of five. And it's an in-home. Um, Kathy and Brenda do a great job of going in, teaching developmentally appropriate tasks. If they see any developmental delays, making sure they get appropriate referrals to the other organizations um, across the state to help with those. Um, any testing or whatever. An awesome program. Um, and then within my reach, this is one that we've been doing for about five years now. Um, it's dear to my heart um, because it's teaching um, adults how to have better relationships. It's just, uh, it's, for sing it's for individuals. They can be in a relationship or not. Um, but it really targets um, individuals who've had multiple 
um, bad experiences with relationships and teaches them what a healthy relationship looks like, um, some communication skills, and really the, the goal of it is um, to teach everybody that healthy relationships are within your reach. Um, that everybody deserves to be in a healthy relationship, whether that's a romantic one or just with friends and family, but relationships are important. Um, so it's really, it's a really good program, and we How primarily do, do get that people at the, for that? What? How do you get clients for that one? Um, Most of them are kind of self-explanatory. That one, um, Brenda and I go to the treatment center out in Winoka and okay. do that one, um, but we've also... Um, done this through the Methodist Church, um, and we've offered it through the Vocational Center also, um, the Technology Center, so um, we will probably try again next fall. It's a little bit um, difficult because it is a 15-hour curriculum, um, so it's hard to get people to come consistently for that because we usually do it um, in two-hour blocks, so eight two-hour blocks, um, but you have just visiting time in there. Um, so, yes, um, we've talked, I've talked to the Ministerial Alliance, and I've also um, talked with the court system to see about um, other ways that we can present that program, because it, it's an amazing program. Um, see lots of benefits from it. So if you guys have ideas for us on how to get individuals into that program, I would be happy to take suggestions. So that's just a little bit about our basic programs. Um, the re main reason I'm here is not only am I the counselor, the counselor at Northwest Family Services, but I run our emergency youth shelter. Um, and this is not a traditional shelter shelter. It's a host home program, which basically is emergency foster care. Um, we are a little bit different from your traditional DHS foster care. Um, we are licensed through DHS as a placement provider, um, so then we go ahead and license our own homes. So you're not licensed as a DHS foster home, but you're licensed as a Northwestern, Northwest Family Service foster home. Um, and we do just emergency care. It's usually less than 30 days unless there's some extenuating circumstances. And it's not, like I said before, it's not restricted to just custody kids. It can be um, families that are going through some type of crisis. And actually the majority of kids that we see are families that are going through some type of crisis. We've got the teenager that's having some problems within the home, do a timeout period, do family counseling and get everybody back on board so they can go back home. Or um, like I said earlier, if there's um, an emergency surgery or there's been a car accident and the kids need some place to be that's safe, until family members can get in, we provide that service. Um, we, like DHS, I know they came and presented a while back, are looking desperately looking for some new homes, some new families to do this. Um, and I always like to say um, we are different from DHS because it's not just state custody kids and we're short term. Um, so um, we pay a little bit different. I am in on 24-hour call whenever somebody has a child in their home um, and am always there and kind of navigate if they are in state custody, I nav navigate the state custody part of it while you guys provide care to the kids or the families provide care to the kids. Um, so I just wanted to, we are desperately looking. There's um, just an informational brochure here. Um, if you guys are aware of any families that might be interested, um, I know both DHS and Northwest Family Services are looking for homes. Um, so that was my main plea, why I asked him if I could come and visit um, with you guys today. Um, I know we had some children in, in our care um, a couple weeks ago, and because of the shortage um, of homes in Northwest Oklahoma, um, the young lady went through five placements in less than a week and a half because she, people would say, I can do it for a couple nights and then, and it was absolutely no fault of hers. Um, so there's, Northwest Oklahoma um, definitely needs some homes. I know DHS did a statewide search for private um, contractors to set up homes um, and nobody from the whole Northwestern part of the state applied. 
So we're still um, pretty desperate for that. So like I said, if you guys know of anybody or if your family would be interested. Um, last year, let's see here, in FY11, Northwest Family Services, we had 34 kids um, in care. Um, like I said, over half of those were family crisis situations. Um, and we, at that point in time, we were taking kids from all over the state, little kids under the age of five, um, because my belief was that um, kid, little kids shouldn't be in a traditional shelter. They needed to be in a family home. So we opened that up. Um, our funding has tightened down dramatically since then, so now we are just taking children from Woods, South Alpha, and Major County. Um, and last year we had um, 16 children, and so far this year we've had 11. And that, that's our fiscal year, so from July 1 to now, we've had 11 kids. Um, so anyway, um, we're still providing a great service. We've just reduced down um, our catchment area that we're, we're doing that in. Um, and DHS um, has also gone through some major changes um, as of now. Um, children under the age of two cannot be in a traditional shelter. Um, by um, July 1st, I think it is, kids under the age of six are not going to be allowed to be in a traditional shelter because they too are realizing that's not a good environment for little kids. Um, and I think by December, um, children 12 and under are not going to be allowed to be in shelter, the traditional shelter. Can you so define traditional shelter? That's um, a building situation where you have shift work. Um, where um, they're like a dormitory or more bed. like a dormitory type thing. Um, and bunk beds. Bunk beds. Um, you've group got situation. group situation. You've got kids, um, both genders. You've got kids from babies to 17 all in one area. Um, the good ones that um, are run by other um, youth service agencies try to do the family dining and all of that kind of stuff and they've got chores and things that they do. Um, state run shelters, there's one in Oklahoma City, two in Oklahoma City and one in Tulsa um, are a little bit less desirable. Um, they tend to have more problems and the problems are um, more because it's over, they're overcrowded. Um, a lot of time and they're being bounced. Um, when you're in a shelter um, technically, you're only supposed to be there for 10 days, maximum 30 days, because it's an emergency shelter. Um, so kids will be bounced from one shelter to the other all over the state. makes it very difficult for them to have visits with their families, to build connections, relationships with anybody, um, because they're being bounced. Um, so we really try to um, make sure that we maintain all those family connections that we have visitations going on, that we're doing family counseling, if that's um, something that the family's needing. So while, while we have somebody in our care, I'm getting them doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, whatever they need to, um, to take care of them and get things in care. It's amazing, some of the things we deal with. But. What's the primary difference, like on child, like that? Whether DHS gets them or you guys get them, who um, ascertains that? If there's any type of abuse that goes on, we have we are mandatory reporters, just like the rest of you guys are. Um, so we would have to report that to DHS. Um, if DHS then removes them, if they find that there's a reason to investigate, they will remove them from the home and their emergency custody of DHS. We still get some of those kids. In fact, most of the children that we get from DHS are in that emergency situation. They've just been removed from the home or their the investigations going on. They may get to go back home or they may have to stay in foster care for a period of time. So DHS gets them first and Typically. they take them to you guys. Typically. Okay. Um, or um, we may get a call, um, typically happens in the middle of the night or Friday afternoon, um, we get a call saying we've just got to pick up order, we're going to go pick up these kids, can we meet you, do you have a place for them? Um, and we do that. So they may not have been in anybody else's home or any other situation. Um, a lot of times the workers picking them up, bringing them to me, and I'm their first real contact um, with the system and help them to get, navigate through that. 
we had a young lady, 15 years old, um, a while back that she had an attorney, she had, you know, she had everything in place, but she didn't know whose responsibility was what. Who am I supposed to talk to for this? Who, who do I go to? So I spend a lot of time, even with my little kids, going through, this is the court system. Um, if you ever deal with one of my kids, the judge is the big boss. Um, that's how I explain it to them. We go through, you know, the principal's the big boss at your school, the judge is the big boss of the adult world, and we go through the process of, you know, who's making decisions and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so it's really helping my, I feel like, um, you know, I have three children of my own. I want these kids taken care of the same way I would take care of my kids. I want them to have all the understanding and all the opportunities that I give my children. Um, so that's what we, that's what we <coughs> strive for. Um, but emergency situations, a family member may call me directly, or I've gotten a call from the police station or from um, the hospital. Mom just came in, she's having emergency surgery, she's got two little ones here, can you guys come help? There's no abuse, neglect, there's no reason why um, DHS has to be involved in those cases. Um, the parent signs, signs the kids into care, um, and then we work things out, and I try to make contact with extended family or whatever. To, so, um, state, custody, state is not always involved. If there's no abuse or neglect going on, I don't have to involve them at all. Um, and sometimes we just have parents, like I said, the teenage teenage crisis going on, family um, conflicts, and the parent will call. Usually, wind the counseling, and then we get into it. It's like you know, maybe a little timeout period would be best. We'll do family counseling while we have the child in our care, um, making sure that they're taken care of. And let everybody cool off a little bit. So. Fair amount of that too. Any other questions? Okay, I was asked um, to give a few updates. Uh, I'm, I know Lisa McMurphy came and talked to you about creature concerns a couple months ago. I'm on the board for that. Um, we have, um, we're currently participating in Bank It. So if you have any money you want to donate to the Bankit program, it's going to us till the end of March. Um, and that is going really well. Um, we've got an adoption event set up in, um, on Saturday in Enid. Um, Pet Sense in Enid is, uh, is also allowing us to place cats there now. Um, we've had eight adoptions in the last two weeks, so we're very excited. Um, so we're starting to move our animals just in time for springtime and the rush of babies coming in. So, um, <laughs> we don't have a ferret right now, but we will we'll be on the lookout. We've got guinea pigs, rats, cats, dogs. How do you name it? Ferrets, not rabbits. You need rabbits. Is that what she said? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Yes, we have rats. They're very cute. Rats are very intelligent little creatures. Um, so, just wanted to give you an update on that. Girl Scouts is my other major, you know, the thing I don't get paid to do and spend half my life doing. Um, cookie sales have been extended because of our snowstorm. So, the 24th is the last day to get cookies. So, if anybody still needs them, you can contact me. I'll be happy to set you up. Um, and one thing, Girl Scouts, um, we've got the paint for the Girl Scout hut. The roof was done um, with the money that we got from Bankhead last year. Um, so that's been taken care of. We have the paint for the hut. Um, and I think Steve's going to probably be trying to get some of you guys to come and help do a work day um, to get that hut painted. Um, and then we're going to start focusing on the floor and some of the cosmetics on the inside. We've got some wiring and some plumbing and stuff that need to be done. But uh, the, the outdoor painting is our next thing, and it's just a matter of getting a nice day um, to get it done. Um, we've pretty much got it all scraped and ready. But, so there's my little updates on my other volunteer side of my life. <laughs> Yay!